Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Oh my gosh, today is so exciting because I am in Minneapolis. I'm actually not in the actual city. I'm in a city south of Minneapolis because we're visiting one of Daniel's friends. We went to the Ren Fair yesterday and it was so much fun. It was my first Ren Fair ever and there was a lot to see. Like it was like almost overwhelming. But anyway, today we are driving up to Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, because we are going plant shopping and I have a book signing at Lost in the Forest Co. So I'm super excited to be here and meet you guys. There's a lot of people in the plant community in this area, or at least I think that I have a lot of followers here. So I'm really excited. We have to start off the day right. You know what it is. <laughs> it is a chai with oat milk, brown sugar, and pumpkin cold foam and it is so delicious. It's a lot darker than it normally is. I think maybe they just use like a different oat milk. I'm not exactly sure. But that drink is seriously like autumn vibes in a cup. It's so delicious. Okay, so we're gonna start off by going to Tonkadale. I have always wanted to go there, so I wanted to make that a priority today. And it's about an hour and a half drive from where I am currently, so let's freaking go. All right, friends, we made it. Woohoo! This drive has been so beautiful like the fall colors in this area on point. Also, I think someone just watched me record this. That's something I have to get used to. I'm still not used to that. Okay, let's go inside. Okay, normally I do just music over these plant shopping clips, but this time I decided to try a little bit of a voiceover because I've been doing voiceovers on TikTok and they're kind of fun. So anyway, this is the entrance of Tonkadale. I really like this wind chime terracotta pot situation. The entrance really showed up and showed out. It was so beautiful, except for the warty pumpkins. I'm not a warty pumpkin girl, but look at how beautiful this big old Monstera Deliciosa is. Honestly, goals. I hope that one day all of the leaves on mine all face one direction and it can look like that again. This place was really, really big. I did think it was gonna be bigger than it was just based on like what I've seen online, but they had really, really good selection of plants like big specimens as well you're going to notice that that like the plants in this nursery were just very large which i really appreciate when a nursery has big plants because i know that a lot of people like to start off with small plants but if you have a bit more of a mature collection or you want to just sort of like skip ahead big plants are nice and look at these variegated obovadas i don't know i don't think this is the splash version but i've never seen these in person and they looked pretty good i think they were 50 dollars. pretty good deal i think for a larger more rare hoya specimen but i'm also not super into the hoya genre like i'm not a hoya well i guess i am a hoya head but anyway <laughs> I'm not buying Hoya all that often, so I don't know if that's even a good price, but they had really beautiful philodendron, like in general, their philodendron selection was really nice. This little Dishidia was really beautiful, um, but yeah, I was super impressed by their large plants, especially these huge Gloriosum. We know that I have a small Gloriosum, <laughs> and I hope one day she achieves this look because this really full-leaved, leaved plant, um, <laughs> This plant with a ton of leaves was really, really cool. I have not seen the philodendron Jose Bono. I don't think I said that correctly. I've never seen that plant in person until this trip. I saw it twice and it's so pretty. And also there was so many ring of fires in this nursery. And I don't think I've ever seen a full flat of Anthurium Clarinervium before. These were really beautiful. And if I didn't already have one, I probably would have purchased one of these. They're so nice. That was such a good selection. And most of all, I was very impressed with these Albo Monsteras. They were $300 and I purchased one about this size at that price a couple years ago. Um, the leaves were a lot smaller though. So all of these leaves are pretty mature. I think this is a really great deal. So if you're looking for one and you live in the Minneapolis area, definitely go check these out. They're super beautiful. I didn't pick any of them up, so they could all be mid-cuts. I actually, in hindsight, was thinking maybe they are all mid-cuts. I don't really know. I didn't look. I should have, though. <laughs> This philodendron right here, I actually, I don't remember if this is a philodendron, but this plant was really cool. And I'm just kind of getting more into funky plants like this that maybe you don't see often online, but they're really, really cool. And look at this, like, okay, here's what I mean by the Jose Bono. Like, 
<laughs> Buono? I don't even know. I'm sorry. I'm just like saying the name as I think. I don't think I've ever heard somebody say that name out loud, so I'm probably really messing that up. These were so big and I feel like for that price, it was a good deal. I don't know. I've never really researched these plants too much to know what a good price would be. What do you guys think? Is this a good price or not? I don't know if you could see the price because it was kind of out of focus. This lens is having a lot of trouble. This was a philodendron fuzzy petiole, and this is one of those plants that I haven't really thought about a ton, but it's a really beautiful plant when it is big. When it's kind of small, it reminds me a lot of a philodendron splendid, which is the melanochrysum and varicosum crossed together. Their selection of Calathea and Maranticiae was really impressive. Like they all looked so good. So either they loved this greenhouse or it was a new shipment. <laughs> I'm not sure. But these magic stars were so gorgeous. I really wish that mine had that much pink on it. Mine doesn't have a ton of pink. It's more of a green-ish variety, but these were so pretty and I find these to be relatively easy all things considered for a Marantissiae. They also had a really nice selection of Diffenbachia which is a type of plant that I've pretty much sworn off but I think that these more intricate like variegated Diffenbachia, Diffenbachia are really lovely and this one I think was called like a Homeolima or something. See this is why I don't do voiceovers because I have to remember what these names are and I never do and I just butcher it so sorry about that but this is a variegated peace lily which is so beautiful and they also had a nice little selection of orchids I really like that they had orchids that weren't just the phalaenopsis orchids they had some more unique versions which I think is really cool because there's so many different types of orchids out there but I usually only see one type so they're not really that interesting you know I had to go over to the Fetonia section because look at her. Miss Fetonia is looking so good. And we have the lettuce Fetonia, as I like to call it, the bigger version, which I don't prefer. I really like that little petite leaf Fetonia. <laughs> Sometimes I get questions about if I like all Fetonia. No. <laughs> Fetonia is not created equal in my mind. But their Hoya selection was also pretty big. They had some large specimens hanging up. This is a Wayetii and I loved it. They also had a really nice Peperomia section, which as I've spoken about on my channel before, I'm not a big fan of Peperomia. I think they're really great for a short period of time, but long term they don't usually tend to do super good in my collection. But they had some really beautiful varieties. I really like this Rana Verde and then they had some watermelon peperomia and then these, I'm forgetting what these specific peperomia are called, but they're like ruffly and there was one that had a really nice deep pink color. Look at that. That is so beautiful. If I got that for Valentine's Day, that would be such a fun little gift. It would basically be a long-term flower arrangement because it, it probably wouldn't live very long in my house, but I have no idea why they had so many Boston ferns. So anytime I go into a cactus section of a nursery on this side of the country, I am reminded how nice it was to live on the West Coast in Tucson where the cactus prices were so low. I have one of these uh, crested Murtillo cactus in my collection right now and it needs some TLC and after seeing the price on these, I decided to give it some TLC that it's been needing because I don't wanna have to rebuy it at that price. Insane. They're probably needing to be shipped in from pretty far away, so it does make sense that it would be cheaper in Tucson. You know, I'm just a bit of a cactus girl, so I like seeing beautiful cacti, and this place really had a nice selection. So I actually just got back in the car from going to Trader Joe's. I was on the way to Lost in the Forest Co. and then I saw that there's a Trader Joe's on the way. So I stopped because I needed to go to Trader Joe's anyway and I was gonna be getting there super early. And so I decided I wanted to get there at 12.30 because I have a book signing there at one. So I wanted to get there early, but not like too early. So anyway, I went to Trader Joe's got some yummy fall stuff I'm super excited but Tonkadale was really cool it was smaller than I thought it would be but it was set up like 
like a nursery. You know, there was rows and there was plants and they were beautiful plants. I am glad <laughs> that's not my local nursery because I would spend way too much money. Yeah, it was really beautiful and worth the visit. It's one of those nurseries that has like a really cool home decor section as well. It was a really well-rounded place. But now we're gonna go to Lost in the Forest Co. I'm gonna film a little bit while I'm there doing the signing and just showing you what the shop looks like. And then we're gonna go to one more place after that. Okay, voiceover number two. How was the first one? I don't know, we're gonna do it again. So we're now we're at Lost in the Forest Co. which is such a beautiful building. It, like, I cannot explain to you how lovely it was in there. The the atmosphere was, like, so amazing. It was decorated really nicely. And the plants were really full. Like, there was a lot of plants out because they were doing a greenhouse clean-out sale. So they told me that it doesn't normally look like this. I think that it's typically more, not sparse, but just, like, more intentional where plants are put. I don't... I don't know, I've never been there outside of this sale, but I saw so many beautiful Syngonium. Like I used to be so obsessed with Syngonium and then they all got spider mites and I kind of gave up, but there was this one, look at this dark leaf um, Syngonium. I think it's like a Rayi or something like that. I regret not buying this. I really regret not buying this. It was so beautiful, but when Syngonium are that small, they don't tend to do very good for me. So I have to buy them a little bit bigger, but this is a Ficus Shiveriana. I think that's how you say it. And I've never seen this many and I've only ever seen one in person before. You saw me unbox it on my channel and I gave it to my friend and she was so happy. So there's a little update on that, but look how beautiful. Like I love these black little pegboard things. They're not pegboards, but you know, I just love that accent on the wall. And look, another Jose Bono. It's so crazy to see it twice in the same day when I've never seen it before. They had lots of pink princesses, and I will say that their Hoya selection was very nice. These plants looked super healthy, super big. Like all of these pots were very full, and I just love seeing a full Hoya collection like this like a hoya section and these hoyas right here these compactas that is the size that i bought my big compacta so if you know my big compacta it was literally that small in 2019 which is insane i was really tempted to buy one of these variegated wayetii i didn't but look at this another plant that i regret not buying i'm so sad that i didn't pick this up because i've never seen it in person before and i do not remember the name i can picture the name but i do not remember it enough to say it out loud so I'm sorry about that. This is a philodendron tortum. Very beautiful, a little foreshadowing here. Oh, is she picking that up? I think she was. And also this was my first time ever seeing a Monstera Oblica in person. I had never seen one and I had always thought that they were overhyped. And then I saw this and I'm like, okay, it kind of makes sense. Like they're very striking. We're at the back of the store now where they had just like a bunch of trailing plants. And then they also had a self-serve soil mixing station, which I think is so cool that you can go in somewhere and mix your own soil. Like if you don't use Dela tanks, I have to say that this is a really great option because you can just make what you need and use their ingredients. And you don't have to worry about making a mess or storing all the stuff in your own home. It was awesome. Hi guys. Okay, so I'm finishing up this video at home because I wanted to do a little haul and show you the plants that I picked up at Lost in the Forest Co. And just like have a nice little exit to this video because I realized that um, I didn't do an outro or anything like that. My camera battery was running low and I had plans to go to another plant shop. I was going to go to Planty Queens after the book signing but I rolled up and they were closed and this is all my fault because I didn't like pay attention to their hours. Like I should have known that they would have um, limited hours on a Sunday. I didn't even think about it. So anyway, I do need to go back and visit. There's several places that I still wanted to go to, but I didn't have time because it was such a quick weekend. I was also there for a Ren fair, So that's what I was doing all day on Saturday. But anyway, let's talk about the plants that I picked up. The first plant that I picked up is this philodendron tortum. And I just find this plant so fun. And it's one that I've wanted for a while, but I just have never done it because I didn't know how well it would travel because these leaves are just like so funky. But as you can see, like it definitely has the vibe of like a palm tree and i just think it's so cool it grows out from this like central point you can see that there's like a, some new there's like possibly some new growth coming out where that pink is i don't know if that blends in with my hand 
but it's a really good size. Like I like buying plants like this at a good size so that it doesn't feel, um, I don't know, like it's gonna die on me. Cause sometimes if I buy a plant too small, I am worried that I'm not gonna be able to keep it alive to the point where like it gets over the threshold of like being a sensitive little plant. But this one has definitely crossed that threshold and I'm really happy about it. Dude, these leaves are just so freaking sick. Like look at this. This is I think an even newer leaf than this one. Look at like, it's just so cool. Anyway, it's like kind of hard to show it because the leaves are so skinny and so the camera probably doesn't even know what to focus on, but it's just really awesome. And I got this at Lost in the Forest Co. That's the only place that I actually bought plants. I wanted to buy some things at Tonkadale, but I decided not to because I didn't want them to be sitting in my car. Um, and I just figured that since Lost in the Forest Co. was having this like big sale, I would be able to find something good. And I found another wishlist plant. I, I need to do like a wishlist video or something like that because I'm realizing that there's some wishlist plants that I like have not updated the internet about that I had. But in any case, I have a really beautiful variegated heartleaf philodendron. These are just so cool. This is one of those plants that is like currently so small that I do worry if it will ever pass this threshold. Like, am I gonna be able to keep it alive to the point where it turns into a bigger plant? I don't know, I certainly hope so. It was only $35 though, so that felt like a pretty good price point to take that risk. In fact, that might be like a very good price point to take that risk, especially for a plant like this. Um, by the way, the tortum was like 80, oh, it says 85 on it. So I don't know. I thought that it was just really cool that these plants were in stock in person. I had never seen them in person before. So it was really exciting. And I was especially excited about this one. So I don't know where exactly I'm gonna put it. I think maybe I'll put it in the cabinet for a little bit or maybe just put it someplace where I can pay a lot of attention to it, like in the spot next to my sink in my kitchen because I'm always looking at the plants there and I think I wanna move some stuff around over there. Um, but I definitely want it in a place where I can monitor it and make sure that it is happy because again, I really want it to get to the point where it is like putting out lots of growth. And I think I might actually put it on a, um, a plank of wood or something like that so that it has something to climb and hopefully that will encourage the leaves to get pretty big because these do climb if you let them. You guys, the third plant that I got is a, Florida beauty. <laughs> okay, so this was my number one wishlist plant, like literally my number one wishlist plant for years. And I kept like, there was a few opportunities for me to get one from somebody online, but I just felt like it was too risky. Like I never felt like inclined enough to be like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna take that risk or like, yeah, let's do this trade or whatever. Like it just never, not that it never felt right, but I was just never like, yeah, let's do this. And so finally I saw one in person. There was actually several of these in person and they were, I'm assuming this was like a mid cut. And so it's kind of starting over. So you can see this leaf is like very juvenile compared to this leaf. So I'm assuming it was just like a mature plant that at some point was like chopped up. Um, anyway, we have a new leaf coming out, which is really exciting. I'm happy to see new growth when I first purchase a plant because it just tells me that the plant is at least like kind of happy, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to treasure this leaf and I find this leaf to be like my first Monstera Albo leaf. Like it was like really mature and big and then all of the growth after that was like kind of juvenile, but I hope that this one sizes up faster than that Monstera took. We will just have to see. I find philodendron like generally faster growers for me in my house than Monstera, um, but we'll just have to see. It's in a pretty good soil mix right here like I, I really enjoy this soil mix it's pretty similar to de la tanks um and so i'm gonna keep it in that and probably just put it in a cover pot and put it on my bench here where i can keep an eye on it at all times because i really want to focus on this plant and make sure that it gets big beautiful growth and probably will eventually put it on some sort of climbing situation um, because i'd love to get leaves like this <laughs> as soon as possible this is just so beautiful Oh my gosh. So anyway, those are the three plants that I got on this trip. It was so much fun to do another book signing. I felt kind of like burnt out on book signings for a while, so I just stopped doing them for a couple of months, like through the summer. But... <laughs> Ew! Why are you just watching me? It's so weird, Dan. Sorry. I hate... How long were you watching me? Long enough. I'm 
not mine. All right, friends, so those are all the plants that I got on the trip. It was definitely a really fun, quick weekend trip. And now that I know that it was like a, well, it was like a seven hour drive. So that's a little long for like a weekend trip, but <laughs> I would really like to visit Minneapolis again because the people were great. The weather was great. And I've always wanted to go to Minneapolis and I'm so glad that I finally did. One of my best friends grew up there and she always talked about how beautiful it was. And I totally agree. The trees just seemed to be even bigger than the trees here. So I don't know if there's like different types of trees there. Um, but the colors were like very rich up there because it is obviously colder than here at, the, at this point in the year. So I got to see some fall colors, like a, an early look of the fall colors because it is like slowly turning here, but it is still mostly green. But okay, anyway, I'm getting off track. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing what I got up to this weekend and the plants that I picked up. Um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.